Hey guys, what is up? Awesome the sauce here. Hope you guys are having a great day. And welcome to another video about a new upcoming update. This never happens, but King's Isle has been going crazy, man. They're putting out teaser after teaser after teaser. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, there's tons of new content in that video, but today we're going to be covering another new piece of content, which is the upgraded dark pact. Now, before I show you guys the information that we were revealed today, uh, this is what Dark Pact is right now. Very underwhelming spell, especially as a depth wizard. Basically what it does, it does 300 damage to self, and then it gives you a 30% balance blade. Now for a death spell, it's very useless for death wizards, because anyone who puts up a death blade automatically cannot use Dark Pact anymore, because they will be doing damage to themselves for a much, much weaker blade. Not to mention, because it's a balance blade, this spell is remarkably useful for every other school but death so this it's it's a very unfortunate spell uh in its current state a lot of people have been asking for these spells to be changed and today we got the answer to our prayer so this is from the wizard 101 devs twitter i'm gonna link the tweet in the description if you guys want to check that account out they always put out uh ways for the community to give feedback but this is a new and revised dark pack that we might be seeing in test round bop so as you guys can see, this is very, very different. It's basically a Moon School damage hit, and instead of 130 blade, it gives 225 blades. Now at face value, this doesn't really seem like it's gonna be that big of a change for Death, but I'm here to argue why this might be one of the biggest buffs that Death has ever gotten. So right now, Death is very reliant on blade stacking for one big hit. Generally, you just blade several times so that you can either do a Vengeful, or if your opponent shields enough, then you can go for a Minotaur. If they overshield, you go for a Shatter into whatever makes the most sense. It's a very linear way to play because unlike other schools, like let's get, let's take, there's many examples of this. There's Fire, there's Ice, there's Myth. What they'll do, they won't blade up for one big hit. They'll do the same blade twice. They'll get a Furnace or a Sleet Storm or a Reliquary, and then they'll get a Bubble and then they'll overtime into a hit. Now, the only thing that Death doesn't have in that entire combo is that they don't have a bubble, which is why you don't really see that many Death Wizards going for a regular 40 blade into another regular 40 blade into maybe something closer to like, you know, um, a poison, you know, or even a skeletal dragon, and then they hit. You don't see that combo as much, even though, you know, they, they do seem like they could do it. So the spell that you see on your screen, it might be death substitute for not having a bubble, and it works. It works really well. The whole point of a bubble is that it acts as a third buff besides your regular blade, your aura. You also want a bubble so that when you overtime, what you're really threatening is a really, really big hit. So for death, this could be kind of like the bubble that they never really had, and it's an extra weakness counter. But Sauce, they already have a weakness counter. Snack attack, yes, it does push a weakness over. It's not the worst spell, don't get me wrong. It's actually a pretty decent spell. The problem is, it's it's an AoE. So yes, it's the only spell in the game where you can currently hit through a 90 and punish your opponent for doing a weakness on you. But because it attacks every enemy on the field, they it, the damage just takes a massive hit. Maybe if this were a single hit and, you know, people actually went out of their way to upgrade to 7 pips, then I could see this being a very good spell. Unfortunately, in its current form, it's just really not that good. So a double blade dark pack that can clear out weaknesses and replace with buffs, that could be a huge, huge buff to death. But if all it was was just a huge buff to death, I would not be making this video. What I am very curious about is how does this update unfold for other schools? Let's say that I'm on an ice, which is one of the most powerful schools at the moment, right? Currently, what ice wizards do, this is literally the meta, right? They'll blade twice, they'll put up a bubble, wait for a sleet storm mate cast, and all they really have to do is polar swarm, and now you're looking at a triple buffed shadow hit looking right at your way. You can't triage the overtime because you'll take the abominable. You can't shield because the overtime will be there. You can't really do anything against that. What I'm trying to say is blade into blade into the bubble is one of the most powerful combos for, for ice at the moment. And that is without the effects of Dark Pact. Now imagine if this spell was added into the mix. Now you're looking in four short moves, two ice blades, one bubble, and one Dark Pact. 
And then during that time, if you maybe get a May cast Sleep Storm, you're looking at a few short turns. You can set up for a combo that's literally twice as powerful as Polar Swarm into a bomb is already. So this opens up the question, will this treasure card be allowed in PvP? In, 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 in its treasure card form still. Let's look at the current Dark Pact treasure card, right? If you're any school but death, the only reason you would really want a Dark Pact treasure card is either to clear off very powerful weaknesses or to clear off people that try to faint against you. That would be a very situational time, so we see, even though Dark Pact is definitely more useful for every school but death at the moment, like I mentioned earlier, you still don't really see the spell used all that often. But imagine if after the spell on it for Dark Pact, the treasure card became a double blade instead of a single blade. Now, you see literally every school benefiting from this just as much as death will benefit from it a school like storm all they have to do is do one tc dark pact and then if they have a bubble up or even a galvanic may cast they can elf and you're looking at one dark pact one lightning elf and you're threatening a gigantic hit already pvp is in this really weird place where overtiming into a hit is like extremely extremely powerful and this is an example of a spell that will absolutely make that problem worse so yes i completely agree that death specifically needs this buff on dark pact i specifically disagree that dark pact if it it is updated to this i really really do not think that it should be a treasure card maybe they can do what they've been doing with audits in general which is the treasure cards don't get affected so that means like you know if you do have a dark pack treasure card it'll just be this version or alternatively what that might make them do because they don't want every school benefiting from a death spell change what they might do is just make dark pack tc no pvp in general so sauce they make dark pack no pvp in general problem solved right Th the problem is at that that's also not so right let's say you got rid of dark pact as a treasure card in pvp right then you're looking at empower being the only counter to faint stackers what do i mean by faint stackers basically there are people who go in with very very small decks i'm talking like we're talking like decks maybe that are three rows and what they will do right in their side deck they'll pack maybe a tc faint and then in their main deck they'll pack maybe a couple of faints maybe an item card potent a regular potent you know what I'm saying? And then they'll have, like, you know, a shatter in their side deck. You know what I'm saying? And maybe some pierces, maybe some shatters. You get the deal. And then they'll just do a very powerful hit before you can react. Now, faint stacking in PvP, in my opinion, it's a very easy way to win if your opponent just deck fails. Especially because let's say that they do uh, just keep tower shielding or something, right? All you have to do is shatter into a shrike, and there's no way they could possibly keep up with a very powerful faint stacked hit. Currently, the only counter to people who use several different feints in rapid succession against you is Empower and Dark Pact. So if they got rid of Dark Pact, then Empower would be the only way to counter faint stacking. So yes, if they were to do that, I guess Empower still stays, but I, I guess the question that I'm asking is, what happens as they start auditing all these utilities, all these self-damage hit utilities? Will it get to the point where faint stacking can't be countered by any other school using TCs like Empower or Dark Pack? And this is not to mention all the audited spells that are utilities for certain schools. Some spells that come to mind are spells like Triage, right? Spells like Enfeeble even, spells like Shatter, spells like... Uh, shift. Some of those we've seen that they've become no PvP. Will this g extend to all these debt self damage hits? And if they do, what do you do against someone who just faint spams against you? I have some concerns about not only how this dark pack spell is gonna affect other schools more than it affects death, but I also have a lot of concerns about the future of self damage hits and faint stacking strategies in PvP. Personally, I feel like it's very unfair to go against an opponent that literally packs a two row deck and just faint spams against you. I know people call that a strategy. I just think it's like, it, there's not there's nothing much to it. You're literally just hoping that your opponent doesn't have some cards to counter you. Maybe even one or two cards to counter you. And then you just win off of it. Not to mention, people who do faint stack, they very often rock pets with may cast pierce, may cast steel ward, may cast shatter. Those kind of strategies are very, very RNG reliant. They rely completely on the random may cast that might win you the game. It's very, very hard to make an argument as to why those should be in the game. Especially if your goal 
in PvP is to create a competitive and fair climate, right? You want a competitive and fair game, right? I think strategies were just faint, faint, hope they don't pull what they need, and then you win. I, I, I just don't see that being that competitive. I just don't. I guess the purpose of this video is that I am excited about Dark Pact and what it'll mean for death, very specifically death, right? But... I'm not excited for what it means for other schools if that version, this audited version of Dark Pact, makes it into TC form. And if if, if self-damage hits are doled out, they're, they're, they're basically, they say, you know what, these are death utilities, why are other schools using them? Then what are we going to do about faint stacker? I think self-damage hits are in a really, really weird spot right now where everyone, everyone really should just put one in their deck because of that one specific type of strat. But should that one specific faint stacking type of strat make death's utilities not unique to it you know it's a really really hard question to answer what do you guys think do you guys think that self damage hits should only be for death because it is a death utility and if it were to be like that how would you address faint stackers also what do you guys think of the dark pack spell do you think it should be tc form the audited version or do you think it should be death only and do you think it's actually going to help death be more competitive i'd love to hear y'all's opinions let me know in the comments below as always man drop a like if you enjoyed leave a sub if you're new there's tons of links in the description including my twitch my twitter my discord my instagram and of course my patreon and as always if somebody hasn't told you you're awesome today they doing something wrong so stay awesome and yeah y'all